This area in our backyard has been neglected for some time. We're going to start addressing it and put things right. The first thing we're going to do is build a screen to hide the water tank and this horrible graphic that came with the house. The screen will be made up of Kumiko panels and I made this test to check that I like the proportions. It's much bigger than regular Kumiko which uses strips of around an eighth of an inch thick. For this screen I'm going to use strips that are 12 millimeters thick which is around half an inch. It'd be easier to make the Kumiko bigger because there'd be less to make but then the gaps would be too big and the proportions would all be wrong and I think the Kumiko would lose its appeal. I made the test piece out of pine but that won't stand up in our weather conditions so I've decided to cut strips from a sheet of form ply and I think doing it this way will be more stable and it'll have less chance of shrinkage and expansion with the seasonal changes. It'll be easier to work with than pine as well because all I have to do is cut them into strips and then they're ready to work with. Because of the amount of work involved in making such a big panel of Kumiko, I've made this video showing how to make the panel and in the next video I'll show how to make them into a full screen to hide that water tank. The completed screen will have a couple of different elements to it so be sure to check that out. The form ply is 12 millimeters thick. I cut the strips at 20 millimeters wide and I got 52 of them out of a full sheet. I'm cutting the strips to length to make a grid for the Kumiko. I need 11 vertical strips and 19 shorter horizontal ones. I've made them a touch longer than what the finished panel will be with a little bit of extra on either end that gets cut off later on. When working with form ply it's easy to cut yourself as the edges are very sharp so I'm just giving the corners a light sand and it doesn't need much just enough to take that edge off. The grid will be joined with half lap joints and before I got started I made this test piece. I've set up this jig on my table saw it has a key and that's to space the joints accurately apart. I'm using a piece of plywood to space the first piece. This one doesn't need to be accurate as I'm leaving a small piece on the end and that will be cut off later on. The next cut is for a border around the outside of the panel. I make the same cut on all of the pieces, both the verticals and the horizontals. Now I'm moving the key into a different position for a wider spacing and that's for the main section of the grid. I go through and I cut all those on every piece and for the longer ones I needed more room on both sides of the saw so I had to do some rearranging. Next I reposition the key back to the original setting and that's to cut the border spacing on the end of all the other pieces. I put a few marks on the back of the jig to make sure it's clamped back in the correct position.
I found this glue at the hardware store. It's clear and I think it will be perfect for this project. I didn't leave quite enough on the longer strips for an overlapping piece so I clamped that overnight for the glue to set and it's a touch short but you won't see it as that's the back of the panel. I went all the way around the edge and I put brad nails in from the back. Now I'm adding a piece of bracing ply to the back of the panel. To fix it I'm using type bond 3 and brad nails, I ended up gluing around the border and then every other strip in both directions. Even though I haven't shown it, I did also put nails into the shorter horizontal strips too. I didn't use heaps of glue so it didn't get too messy, but there were a few drops here and there that just needed wiping off. So far so good, now onto the fun stuff, making the Kumiko pieces. I've made this jig that I screwed to my table saw sled, it's to safely hold the pieces while I cut a point on either end. I cut enough pieces out of the strips to do the whole panel and I'll get two final pieces out of each one of these. There are three different pieces needed to make the Kumiko. These are just the first ones and I cut and install all of these ones first. I'm running a bead of glue on the back of each piece and that will make a good bond to the plywood. It's not worth gluing these joints to the inside faces of the grid, 
The form ply has a film finish and nothing will easily stick to that. It's not needed anyway as the pieces are a tight fit and there's enough of a bond to the backing panel. I reckon that looks pretty good as it is, but there's still a way to go to finish the whole pattern. There were 128 of the first pieces, now I need to make 512 of the next pieces. Instead of cutting the joints individually on the end of all these strips, I've cut these boards here. I'm going to make the joint and cut it across the whole of this board, and the same with the joint on the other side. And then I'll slice this up into the individual strips afterwards, and I think that would save me a lot of time. I'll clamp the pieces to this simple jig, and that will keep the cut accurate. If I tried to make the cuts by just running the workpiece along the fence, the point on the edge of the board would enter the saw's insert plate. Even if it were a zero clearance insert, it would still happen and it wouldn't be accurate enough. It was one of my supporters on Patreon who made me rethink how I was going about cutting these pieces. And this way is definitely going to save me some time. The two bevels to make the point are cut at 22 and a half degrees. For the cuts on the opposite end, I'll run the workpiece along the fence without changing the angle of the blade. This will make bevels at 67 and a half degrees. Even though I didn't show it, I did check the pieces for fit. I made fine adjustments by tapping the fence and I did this a few times until I got a really nice fit. Next I need to take off the opposite corners and I'll show you on these pieces here. That makes a joint ready for the next piece to go into. And um, both sides of this are the same angle, but we need to come in a bit further on this one so the point ends up about two thirds of the way across. To slice the boards up into the final pieces, I made this push block and that's just to make the whole process a bit safer. And the final pieces are much easier. The bevels are all 45 degrees on both ends, which is just a case of running it along the fence with the blade tilted at 45 degrees and then flipping and turning the workpiece. And I need 256 of these for the whole panel. The first pieces that I made earlier could have been made exactly the same way as these. Kumiko is normally made with hand tools and if you give it a go you'll find it very enjoyable and also very addictive. Making these panels is done pretty much entirely on the table saw and is far less enjoyable but because of the scale and the use of plywood it just makes sense. Now to fit the final pieces and I found this just as enjoyable as putting together a regular size Kumiko. As well as running a bead of glue on the back of the pieces I put a small dab where the three pieces come together.
Just to give you an idea of time, it took me about two hours to put these final pieces in, but that goes pretty fast when you're listening to an audio book and you're enjoying yourself. And for cutting all these final pieces, that took about twice as long as installing them. I sanded the surface to remove any stray glue and the glue, even though it looks like silicon, it isn't and it doesn't affect the finish like silicon would. After I gave it a good dust down, I sprayed it several times with decking oil and because that's so thin, that penetrates well below the surface and should give it plenty of protection. I reckon it looks fantastic, but now I need to get on and make more of them. Hopefully you like it too, and don't forget to check out the next video and see how I use them to dress up our backyard and to hide that water tank. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.